Welcome back, America. It's Hugh Hewitt. I'm joined by David Larder, who writes for Defense News. Good morning, David. How are you? Good morning, Hugh. I'm doing well. How are you? I am great. I, uh, I've been disturbed since I read your article last week that the U.S. Navy's first four LCSs, the littoral combat ships, are going to leave the fleet in nine months. I thought we were heading to 355. How do you get there when you decommission uh, four of your newest ships? You know, limited amount of money uh, being allocated to the Navy in the budget, Hugh, and, and I think they decided that they made, uh, the, you know, revamping those ships and modernizing them for modern, uh, for present day usage was too expensive. Do they run that through the White House, David? You know, they sure did. And the uh, White House came back with a memo around Christmas time. I don't know if we discussed it directly, but around Christmas time that uh, asked them the exact same question you're asking is, you know, how is this budget getting us to 355? And the answer was that it's not. And your, uh, you know, your former guest, uh, Thomas Modley, made that point pretty vociferously when he came in that, you know, what the Navy was sending over wasn't uh, wasn't adequate to meet the president's goals. Now, I had Secretary Esper on uh, three weeks ago. And he assured me 355 is still the goal. But then I read in Sea Power today by your colleague Richard Burgess, it's not just the LCS. They intend to deactivate nine ships in 2021. Uh, is this is, they're never going to get, they're not even going to get the 300 for the election, are they? They may or they may not. But it's interesting enough, the budgets that they submitted the past three years have all said that they were probably going to get to 300 that year. Uh, and it's not happened yet. Uh, in fact, I think the most important point to make here, Hugh, as you're talking about deactivating ships, is that the number of ships that the Navy has today is less than what the Obama administration said they would have by today. If you go back and look at the budgets, uh, Obama was tracking towards a 306. So, so not gone that direction. So, David. This is obviously someone is not following the president's direction. Is it, in your opinion, the Pentagon, the Navy or OMB or all three? There are only three sources of, of data point here. OMB, Pentagon, meaning Esper and his team, or the Navy, meaning the CNO and the, and the, and the secretary of the Navy. Which one is it? It's, I think in this case, I believe it's, it's all three to some degree. And I think the Pentagon, certainly since Mattis came in, was highly focused on readiness, right? And all the money was going towards recouping some of the readiness that I, I think is well established. And they did a good job of establishing that the Obama administration, uh, there was a, a significant gap in, in how much money was being allocated to train and modern, uh, train and, and maintain our forces. Uh, so the Navy in particular had a significant readiness gap from the uh, amount of times that they were just deploying aircraft carriers vis-a-vis uh, -vis the deployment schedule, because they would they would go out for these nine, 10, 11 month deployments to fill presence requirements overseas, um, but then would come back and have short turnarounds, not enough maintenance, and go right back out. Um, that took a heavy toll on the Navy, and they've been working out of that hole ever since. But um, the Trump administration came in saying, okay, uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to focus on building the fleet up. But there was a disconnect between what Mattis was focused on and what the president said he was focused on. And indeed, what the president said he was focused on last week when he said we're building. Twitter. Yeah, it's, it's as recently as last week. So I got to ask you the, the obvious question. I love the Army, love Secretary Esper, love all these people. What has to happen is we're confronting China in the South China Sea and around the world. The Navy has to grow and the Army has to shrink. Is that, there, is that the wall into which the budget is running? You know, all the services are making their own arguments. Um, you know, I, I, as a sailor, I, I'm probably going to be held up as a rank partisan to say, oh, I absolutely agree. Uh, but the Army was, is making the case on Capitol Hill and is making the case around town. I've seen them in the Brookings Institute in the Pacific. And frankly, the fact that Congress doesn't have a 30-year shipbuilding plan, which they are required to have every year, uh, makes it very difficult for them to say, no, 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 but it's us. We're the ones that, uh, that are the Pacific force. 
because Congress doesn't know what they want uh, yet. And we've been talking about uh, a new force structure assessment for the entirety of the Trump administration. Now. I know it, it's, uh, it's it's a wasted four years. Honestly, I, I'm so frustrated, and I believe that the president got rolled by the bureaucracy at the Pentagon, and they rolled him completely. Do you agree? You know, that's the, the argument that John Lehman made uh, in the Washington Times this week. Um, you know, they, they he argued that the Navy finally did produce a decent plan, uh, John Lehman being Reagan's uh, Navy secretary. Who's the 600 ship secretary, yeah. 600 ship secretary, that's right. Um, he, he, the Navy finally produced a plan and that it got caught up in Pentagon bureaucracy. And there's probably a lot to that. I think the in fairness to Secretary Esper and in fairness to the Defense Department, we are talking about what Ron O'Rourke at Congressional Research Service says is a once in a generation opportunity to reinvent the Navy from one that's uh, centrally located around aircraft carriers to one that's more focused on distributed operations and long range strike. And that is going to take some time, except that isn't exactly the what the president ran yeah, it, on. It, it sounds like a pre-Pearl Harbor Navy. It really does. It sounds like, oh, we got to move from battleships to something. But in the meantime, a war intervenes. David Larder from Defense News, thank you. I'll be right back, America. Hour number two.